Hello, everyone. This is Simone from Epica, and I'm blowing it up on Metal Gods Radio. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another exciting Metal Gods Radio interview. Uh, today, we have Simone from Epica on the phone. How are you doing this morning or whatever time it is where you are? <laughs> Hello. Thanks for having me. I'm doing great. How are you? I'm doing wonderful. What's, uh, what's new in your world? Uh, yeah, the the Epica album Omega, our eighth album's out, and uh, yeah, we're pretty stoked about the positive feedback that we have received so far. So we're still high on adrenaline in between homeschooling and uh, <laughs> the other duties that we have being at home now. But uh, we're doing great, and yeah. Things are things are looking better, I guess, here in, uh, in in Europe. We hope for a change real soon, and can't wait to get back on stage. And uh, you you have a tour booked, uh, in, in in hopes that uh, everything gets back to somewhat normal. Is that right? Yeah, for uh, our European tour got rescheduled two times. And we are now hoping that that's going to take place in 2022. We have some festivals scheduled, uh, a tour in Brazil in December. So fingers crossed that some of that is actually going to take place. We remain uh, positive, but also realistic. And how uh, how has this whole thing affected uh, the recording process? Uh, everything was kind of good uh, up until we when we had to record the lead vocals in the middle of March. So we managed to record the orchestra, the choir, the children choir, and uh, the lead vocals had to be recorded at different studios. You know, um, Mark and I, uh, Mark's the other vocalist, he lives in Sicily, I live in Germany, and our studio is in the Netherlands, and we couldn't travel to the Netherlands. So uh, I recorded in Germany and Mark recorded in, in Sicily. And, uh, well, I'm sorry. And how has the pandemic affected you personally? Uh, it has, I guess, ups and downs. Uh, the silver lining is that I can finally be more with my, my family. Uh, but on the other hand, you know, whenever you have a new album released, uh, this is not the first time that we had to postpone the release due to the pandemic. It's such a, yeah, it's a new situation. Uh, artists are affected hard. And yeah, it was bittersweet. Having an album ready and not being able to release it yet was like sitting, uh, like having a really exciting present underneath the Christmas tree and, you know, we were not allowed to open it or share it with the world. It's a fantastic record. You must be very proud of yourself. I, I am very proud of, of the whole band, you know, that we managed to still be, um, yeah, productive, still uh, create, that we can still create art together. So I'm I'm proud of the collective of the the whole Avica team. Is there a concept to Omega, or is it more of a collection of songs? It's not a real concept album, but it does have like this red line going through it. Epica, we like to write about spiritual, philosophical, sometimes political or religious topics, and there's always a red line going through through our work without being a, a real concept album it's you know it's a little bit the the balance between light and dark that we have within ourselves the journey that we make the spiritual journey that we make traveling through our inner labyrinth so to speak are there any songs on the album that touch on uh, what we're dealing with today well, the lyrics were finished before the pandemic hit but i could definitely say that uh, the song Gaia is dealing about the global warming and of course it's all kind of connected to each other but there is no official song that points towards the pandemic because yeah the lyrics are already finished uh, what's going to be your strongest memory of recording this album uh, <laughs> that's actually a, a funny uh, like too funny 
memories. One of them is that I had, uh, of course, the, the you know the fitness studios were closed, so I had to do workouts at home, and they were completely new to me. And I had such sore muscles that I almost couldn't walk. <laughs> and the bathroom in the studio where I recorded was on a different, um, uh, a different level or a different. How do you say? Yeah. Uh, I had to walk the stairs in order to go to the bathroom and I almost couldn't walk because I had such sore muscles. And I once forgot to pull the handbrake of the car when I arrived at the studio. That was due to the fact that I sometimes have to take sleeping pills in order to sleep. And I was just probably still half asleep. And then the car, as I got out, the car drove back and I almost like hit myself with my own car. <laughs> wow. Luckily, you're, uh, you, you came out of it relatively unscathed. Yeah, I was pumped with adrenaline right after, so I had to calm down a little bit in order to record vocals. But yeah, the studio where I stayed at was really nice, and uh, we managed to still, you know, come up with a great sounding album, despite of, you know, the, the little challenges that we had in the end. We were still lucky in, in the whole situation. The album, uh, once again, is being uh, the new album is once again released by Nuclear Blast. How has that relationship changed over time? We're with Nuclear Blast since uh, a long time now, and they definitely helped us to to the next level. Um, we're we're happy at Nuclear Blast. I'm not quite sure what. You know, the, the business side of it all, we have the management and some other band mem members taking care of that. But we're we're feeling good at Nuclear Blast at the moment. <laughs> and now let's talk a little bit a little bit about the, the skeleton key. That's the most recent video, right? Yes, that's true. Uh, you have some elaborate costumes uh, in that. Uh, do you want to talk a little bit about the, the costumes in that? Well, the video we shot with a Polish production team called Grupa 13. And they are um, known also for their work with Behemoth. And uh, Amaranth also recorded a video with them for their latest record. And um, yeah, for for the photo shoot, I arranged all the outfits together with a, with a stylist. But for the video videos, we we had a Polish costume designer. Uh, on set who created these beautiful outfits um, and they were like the, the skeleton key there was also uh, another artist there who created the masks for the guy who was like the one doing the, the special effects and um, he also custom made all the little keys that were ha hanging from the ceiling and uh, yeah it was uh, lovely. I, I, I enjoy recording videos and doing photo shoots. For me, it's a lot of fun. <laughs> and uh, we're very happy with how the video turned out. It's one of my all-time favorite Epica videos. And uh, is this your first time working with a bird? No, but the first time that I am actually in the same room. For the video Storm to Sorrow, we also... Um, had a, I think, a falcon on set, but I wasn't there when they were recording that. And um, this is the first time that I actually also held the bird and the owl uh, on my on my hand or arm. Was it a little nerve wracking at first, or were you com comfortable out of the gate? Um, I am a very calm person. I don't panic. I don't have any phobias. I mean, if they would have given me a tarantula, I probably wouldn't have looked so peaceful. <laughs> That's something I don't know if I would do. I, I probably would do it to challenge myself, but it it wouldn't be like a, a, a nice experience for me. But I'm not afraid of birds. But our videographer, like the guy who does all our vlogs, uh, he is afraid of birds and he was there as well to do some behind the scenes but he was hiding behind a pole during the <laughs> during the video sequence of, uh, of 
of the owl and the owl sometimes would fly away and I was attached to the owl uh, so I would also he didn't really pull me but I went to the side in order for him you know to land nicely and his uh, human mother so to speak was there as well so she would take uh, she would take the owl in between takes so he would cuddle with her and then she would give him uh, back to me it's uh, quite the experience yeah I uh, was very heavy I was at first I had to hold my arm to keep like my arm with my other arm to keep the arm the hand with the owl up and then they said can you try to hold the owl without but it was like eight kilos or something very heavy and it had very bad breath <laughs> smelled like that mouth <laughs> yeah, probably uh, not using a lot of mouthwash no <laughs> uh, let's talk a little bit about Spotify and Spotify playlists and and how important they are at the moment. Yeah, it is a streaming platform that has taken over the, the music industry, I guess. <laughs> so uh, it's very popular. Um, I use it also, and we use Apple Music. Uh, it's, it's very convenient, I guess, but not very lucrative for the musicians. Uh, and, and that's primarily um, the, the payment uh, the payment works between uh, Spotify the label and then the label to the artist is that right? I think so yeah but Spotify pays very little compared to for example Apple Music they they pay the artist more and the good thing is that still the metal scene Fans uh, of metal music are collectors and still really want to buy the physical product, even though, of course, they probably also stream. Um, but yeah, we are we are lucky that that we are still able to sell physical copies and the LPs making a comeback as well. So that's a good thing. But compared to ten years ago, album sales have declined hugely. Like physical album sales. But there's no way. There's really no way uh, to make that up elsewhere with uh, merchandise, for instance, right? Well, we do sell. We're good at selling uh, merchandise, and and we also try to make you know appealing uh, products and and different versions of the album. Um, we have our own web shop and that's also besides live shows merchandise sales is a, you know, a huge source of income how do you like award shows and music contests do you, uh, do you watch the Grammys uh, or the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame shows and how familiar are you with uh, Megan the Stallion and current American pop well uh, I I'm not that familiar with American pop music. I do know Billie Eilish. Of course, I know Beyonce. But that Megan Stallion, I don't know um, that. And didn't know, don't know her at all. That's not my my musical preferred music. Right. <laughs> um, right. But I do uh, have to say, I like I like Billie Eilish. Uh, she's unique. Uh, I like the vibe of her music, her lyric. She's she's like a real artist, and she's not some kind of puppet, you know, that where a whole team is behind, like a circus. She, she's really a unique artist, and she's told her, her whole story that she's making music with her brother and in her bedroom, and I like that. And um, but but I'm not that up to date with with american pop i think for the fact that i know billy eilish that's already kind of uh <laughs> that's good for me <laughs> you're, you're still hip i guess so yeah <laughs> you probably get asked a lot of the same questions uh which questions are you tired of and what would you like to be asked about instead 
Uh, what is it like to be a woman in a metal band? That's a question I get a lot and has, you know, been asked maybe too, one too many times. Um, a question I would like to be asked maybe, you know, if I have any secret hidden talents that, uh, you know, are kind of peculiar or something like that, <laughs> but people don't know about me or... Uh, yeah, but a lot of people might have assumptions of me that are absolutely incorrect. So, something like that, maybe. <laughs> well, uh, you've asked a question. Uh, please answer. <laughs> uh, one of my unusual talents would be that I'm very good at recognizing faces, like really fast. Uh, in particular, my husband and I, we are very big Netflix fans. Before Netflix, I, I have a huge DVD collection. I'm a movie freak, so I know a lot of movies. And I'm very good at recognizing actors, like their voices or their appearance. And I can say which movies they're playing. According to my husband, that's that's a talent. He's always impressed by that. <laughs> Are there, are there any movie reviewers whose uh, uh, opinions are similar to yours? In other words, are there any re reviewers that you can go to and uh, read a positive review and you can count on them? So like maybe a person or a Rotten Tomatoes or something like that? You mean reviews of movies that, that you know, they are, yeah, I didn't I, quite get I mean, the beginning of the question. There's a lot of people that write, uh, that do reviews, obviously reviews of music and reviews of film. Yeah. Are there any reviewers that you are uh, you are in line with as far as they have the same taste as you and you can go to them to um, you can rely on their opinion? I guess not official reviewers, but one of my bandmates, Rob, uh, he's our bass player and he's uh, the composer of the song... Uh, Rivers and also the skeleton key and we both are movie we like the same kind of movies so he sometimes has recommendations for me and um, uh, he, he even has like the cinema uh, how do you say cinema soundtrack no uh, I can't find it. when you have like a card and you can go to the cinema like a flat rate you know he goes to this he went to the cinema like oh wow at least once a week yeah and he is a big fan of uh Guillermo del Toro I love him too I, I'm a big Tim Burton fan and uh, on tour we we sometimes go to the movies and we go to the museums together because we like the same uh movies and also food so he's he's kind of my critic I guess and we recommend each other movies and <laughs> And stuff. What have you seen lately that you uh, can recommend to uh, people listening to this? Well, my husband and I are watching How to Get Away with Murder. I think it's a, it's a really good series and has great actors in it. Um, the Alienist is uh, a really great series. Unfortunately, only two seasons. Uh, yeah, now that we talk about it, then of course I can't think of anything. What else? I I am a big alien fan, so I just love to watch the old alien movies, but also the newer ones, Prometheus, Covenant. I like science fiction, fantasy, horror. So, um, The Haunting of Bly Manor, I like that, but it took a while to get going. Uh, the ending was was really amazing. Um, of course, American Horror Story. Uh, I rewatched them a lot. Sherlock Holmes with Benedict Cumberbatch. Uh, the Danish Girl is a beautiful movie. That's not science fiction, or it's it's more like a romantic drama. A uh, really beautiful movie as well. Uh, the Snowman, I think it's called. It's uh, like a thriller with um, what's it? My Michael Fassbender. 
I think he's a really great actor. Uh, the girl with drag tattoo. Yeah, I can get keep going for a while. <laughs> and they're not all new movies, but yeah, the girl with the rotten tomato. Uh, I'm sorry, the girl with the. Uh, you said it was the girl with the dragon tattoo. It was a series, right? It was a three part series. It is. There is a series, but also a movie with Daniel Craig and um, Rooney Mara. And the movie oh. is really good. I haven't seen the series. Oh, I, I've seen the foreign movies. Uh, the, there was three What's that the they Swedish? put out. Yeah. The Swedish yeah. ones. Those are the ones that I saw that I, uh, were really good. And you you like the uh, the remakes as well, I take it. Yeah, I like the movie with Daniel Craig. Um, yeah, it's a longer movie. It's like more than longer than two hours or so, but... Yeah, I've watched it a couple of times. Uh, some scenes are very brutal, but I guess if you've seen the series, then you've seen seen that as well. Um, but yeah, I haven't seen the series. But for me, that's a weird thing to do. That's something I don't like. If they make, or, or if they do a remake, or if it's like part one, two, three, and then they swap the the actors, like what they did with Game of Thrones. Of course, Game of Thrones is a classic, but they switch one of the actors and suddenly it's like, hey, well, what happened? <laughs> totally throws me off if they do that. For sure, for sure. Well, uh, thank you so much for your time. Uh, we look forward to um, seeing you when you come to America. Um, is there anything else that you'd like to share with us that uh, uh, as we wrap this up? Yeah, just uh, thank our fans for their support. And if anybody has extra time to spare, we also have a autobiography book called The Essence of Epica. People want to see some cute baby pictures and read a little bit about the history of how we became, how, how we came to become musicians and the journey towards that, then I can recommend our, our book. 